Ma Mustang United States four days ago, and I'm happy to report that we made it to Pokhara, Nepal, which is our staging point for our expedition up into the forbidden kingdom of Mustang. We're here today at the Himalaya Eye Hospital to meet the doctors, to meet the technicians, the other people who worked so hard to put this trip together. <laughs> exactly. We're good. There's not too many doctors you could go to and say, hey, are you willing to fly a bush plane to a remote mountain strip, ride horses for three days over 13,000 foot mountain passes, and do surgeries in a remote, dusty, windy region of the Forbidden Kingdom? Well, what are we doing here? Why are we going to Mustang? Is this a little bit crazy? And the short answer to that is it's a lot crazy, uh, and maybe even borderline insane. If we can give people back the gift of sight, we change their lives forever. Shashitopatan, <laughs> Here we are in Upper Mustang. We finally made it. It's a beautiful day. Behind me is the longest money wall in the world. Prayers carved in individual stones, thousands and thousands of them. 
So we're on our way to Lo Man Thang. The ancient walled city was the capital of Mustang when it was still its own independent country. Mustang is an amazing small kingdom that was absorbed by Nepal a few years back to protect them from being taken over by the Chinese. Well, Mustang being one of the poorer and more isolated regions of Nepal has very limited access to medical care of any sort and virtually no access to eye care. Having problems with your eyes, losing the ability to see has a profound impact on your life. As a child, you can't learn. You become a social outcast because you can't catch a ball. You're an older person, you lose your ability to work, to earn a living. Most of Mustang is subsistence agriculture. And so having one family member who's unable to work becomes a burden on the entire family, can drag the whole family into a, a poverty situation. We have quite an entourage. We have 33 ponies, 18 porters, 18 monks as well. We're rocking, we're rolling, and all I can tell you is thanks to Pemisol and our team of monks. Without this monk power, a project like this could never happen. have been washed out. We had to abandon our vehicles and wade with our gear across a tributary to the Kalikandaki. The good news is now we're high enough up that we don't have to worry about leeches. This is good. Yeah, you want to measure very accurate? Yeah. Yes. Hmm. Did you get any that color? Draw. I have many colors. How many colors do you get? How many colors do you get? How many colors? 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 Ani tama yung route yan na ano ni? Ay lang, tama lang. Tanda ti di tayo. Ah, ti di tayo. Namjun na imba na susu kuha ni si kire. Tay tiri yan susu kaya ni gusto kita daw si kita. Tay kalle kalle kanda gusto kita. Sum sum sum, minang na drawin na kaya pa rin. Sum sum sum. Camp's cranking. We just did our 200th patient. Uh, no shortage of need here. But one of the important things we're doing here is collecting scientific information on every patient, height, weight, blood pressure, pulse rate, in addition to all this eye information. Mustang is unique. It has a population of roughly 6,000 people, and we're looking to see between 25 and 35 percent of the entire population. That's almost unheard of in terms of statistical analysis. Even though I'm typing away, I get easily distracted by an older Tibetan woman or man that comes over and they put on glasses for the first time, they can see, and there's a big smile on their face. Um, I think it's 
very foreign to them, but they know that it's a step in the right direction that's going to change their lives. Okay, we're here at Samar Village. We're about, uh, well, I guess about 11,000 feet up. Uh, we're in a cloud right now. That's a real problem because we're awaiting the arrival of our general medical doctor, Dr. Derek Kyram, and also our surgeon and two assistants from the Himalaya Eye Hospital. The monsoon is still going full force, which is unfortunate. There's been no flights between Pokhara and Jomson for several days. We tried to charter a helicopter. Even the helicopter can't get into Pokhara right now. It's just completely socked in. Just tell Indira Didi that we that we we desperately need her. Okay, we, we really do. We really really need her. You see this pile of equipment that we have to move every day. 400 kilos of eye supplies. This box is filled with eyeglasses. The propane containers are used for sterilization. In the wicker basket, we have a, an iron IV stand. On the other side is our operating table for the surgical clinic. The other big boxes contain medicines and uh, eyeglasses. So we're off now, loaded. Crossing two 13,000 foot passes today on our way to do our next eye camp in Gelling this afternoon. It was such a heartwarming welcome. I have taken care of people in Nepal and the Tibetans in the past. They are the softest, nicest, most welcoming people. They do have a lot of medical conditions. They're looking forward to being treated by us. And I'm really looking forward to the next three days. Yeah. Uh, mustang, upper Mustang, my pilot, so 
अब 250 को हरियाली में So Lomantang is our goal, but it's also the most populated part of Mustang, and we're expecting hordes of patients. Our monks have sent out advance teams on foot and on horseback, reaching some of the most remote villages and settlements in the country, bringing people into Lomantang. We've been invited personally by the king. We're going to have an audience with him. So I don't really know what adventure awaits us, but I know we're going to have a heck of a time when we get there. So Lomantang, here we come. of Lomantang visiting some outlying settlements and villages with our monks to make sure everybody knew about the eye clinic that we're going to start tomorrow. So we're a little tired, a little dusty. The horses are a little tired and dusty too. About an hour from now, we're going to have an audience with the king to get final approval for our project. Of course, he already knows about it, but it's a final formality. We have to go meet the king and he has to give it his blessing. Good to be in Lomantang. Okay, we'll see the king soon, huh? We're going to get hit with a bunch of patients in Lomont Bank. How many? We don't really know. More than 500? 800? Could even be 1,000, which kind of keeps me awake at night. Uh, we're trying to expand our clinic there to two days to make sure we can take care of everyone.
yes, we do have a massive influx of patients. The thing is, the word is out that our general medical doctor, Dr. Indira Kairam, who is kind of well known in the, in the Himalayas as a great healing lady, the word's out and so she slammed. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm in the dog book, I'm in the I'm in the dog book, I'm the dog book, I'm in the dog book, i the dog book, I'm in the dog book, I'm in the dog book, I'm in the Here's the gentleman, age 70, he's a farmer. He has cataracts in both eyes, and they're both operable. And so we're going to bring him to Sarang in a couple of days, and we're going to fix both of his eyes. Good. She needs to come to Sarang. Well, we're catching a ton of cataracts up here. It's really good. Yeah. This child is five years old, uh, but she cannot see, uh, he cannot read also. So this is an interesting case. We've got a young uh, student here, the age 10. My guess is he's not doing very well in school. The reason is he couldn't pass the eye chart test. He couldn't even see the big E. That's not very good at age 10. So the doctors have looked at him. Uh, Dr. Indra has determined that this kid, basically the eyes are okay, but he has a, a very high hyperopic error, which means he can't see anything up close at all. He can't read, can't write, probably can't do a lot of things right now. fix this, so we're going to send him on to refraction, and I will bet in the next few minutes that this young man is going to see a world he's never seen before. We've been asked to make a, a couple of house calls here while we're in Lomanthang. There's evidently some elderly people who are blind, can't make it to the clinic. So at the request of Lama Kunga, uh, myself and Govinda from the eye hospital, a uh, senior eye technician, we're going to go make two house calls and uh, see these people, see if we can evaluate whether there's anything we can do to help improve their vision. This woman can't see. Yeah. She's blind. Yeah. Okay, and she wants us to check her out. Yeah. Okay, we can do that. Yeah. We can do it if we can find a, a little bit of a darker place. Yeah. This is too light here to check her eyes. But if there's some place we can go, we'll yeah. check her eyes, sure. Okay. Yeah, good place. <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. Yeah,
So we've determined this woman has two mature cataracts. She's been without sight for more than half a year. Uh, we think there's a good shot that we can save her vision. We're dilating her now and we'll do a, a more careful check with a dilated uh, eye. Um, assuming that everything looks like it does right now, uh, we will arrange through the monks uh, to hire a four-wheel drive vehicle. Uh, we will bring her to Sarang and we will give her a free surgery. We'll give her a place to stay. We'll provide meals. Uh, we'll bring her home again and hopefully in a few days she'll be back home and be able to see. <laughs> Yeah, 
Good morning. We're here in Saran Village. It's the site of our cataract clinic scheduled for two days. We've rented this entire building and uh, it will be soon mobbed with patients. We're working now on getting the surgical suite prepared. Might not be what you're used to, but it's the best we've got here and pretty typical for these type of outreach projects. This room has been scrubbed out three times Then we're going to flood the room with Formalin, which we sprayed in there last night. Pretty nasty stuff. We'll let that sit overnight so it'll have 18 hours to disinfect. We'll give it a final spritz of Formalin in the morning and then 8 o'clock tomorrow. Look out, baby. We're going to do a whole lot of cataract operations. Today I'm going to see all the post-operative patients and yesterday we did around 52 cataract surgery. All of them were good. Here we are for the first day of the great unveiling. By that I mean today is the day that the bandages come off and the patients will see. Uh, Dr. Indra, our very skilled surgeon, yesterday performed 52 operations, almost all of which were cataracts. Today we're lining the patients up. In the next few minutes, they're going to do a visual check as the bandages come off. Hopefully we'll have some happy campers. 